Your mitigation efforts are working very well, actually, especially to protect those who are most at risk, which has really been our primary focus. <laughs> That's the lie. For ever since we've gotten to understand this horrible, horrible plague that's been unleashed in our country by China. As of yesterday, cases are declining in 70 percent of the jurisdictions compared to 36 percent last Monday. That's a big, big Okay, so he's looking at jurisdictions. Number. 11 he's out of 13 states. He's looking at jurisdictions. Positive rate above 10 percent. Which doesn't take into consideration in what those populations of the jurisdictions in are. In states, the data suggests that the need for continuing vigilance always is strong, even though the numbers are getting very good. States that have the numbers are getting very good. Are you kidding me? Positivity rate between five and ten percent, and in the states with the lowest positivity rates, we also see slight increases in daily cases, and a couple of them. We must ensure that these states do not become new flare-ups, so we're watching them very, very closely. Fortunately, thanks to substantial improvements in treatment and the knowledge we have gained about the disease itself, the recent rise in cases has not been accompanied by a significant increase in deaths. Fatalities what? nationwide are at roughly thousand a day of the April peak, so the death the number of deaths or fatalities are at half the level. One is too much. One death. Cases and death. Look at that graphic stopped. doesn't even Cases correspond to what he just said. Wuhan. Thanks to our major advances in treatment, we've seen vast improvements in recovery rates across all age groups. Thanks to hydroxychloroquine, which has proven to not have anything to do with anything to people recuperating. Aged 18 to 69 and 70% lower among individuals over 70 years old. We've also made significant strides in sheltering those at highest risk, especially the elderly. Approximately 85% Deaths per case is like that, but our cases, cases have gone like that, so deaths are going like this. Just getting some very accurate numbers on this. That's amazing how he'll spin it. People who are generally it. at a much lower risk of complications. Yes, you need to look at the death rate. Began nearly half of all fatalities have been at nursing homes or assisted living centers. Does that make it better? Statistic when you hear that number. This data underscores that the best path forward is an aggressive strategy focused on protecting Americans at highest risk. How about protecting Americans. Race period. The development of a vaccine. We must continue to take extraordinary precautions to shield the elderly. And we're doing that. We're doing that. Well, we should everybody. Never even uh, dreamt possible, both with testing and with common sense. Common sense. And That's nothing that exists in your administration. Underlining conditions, especially the elderly with the underlining, whether it's heart or diabetes, they seem to be the two most predominant conditions that cause tremendous problems, while allowing those at lowest risk to carefully return to work and to school. We should not be returning to school. Where embers flare up. We must engage immediately. But not allowing embers to flare up at all. How about no embers? Science-based approach. And you're not a science-based approach. You're, you're going against science-based approach. You're going against what your scientists are saying. Your own scientists. You're just criticizing massive burps. Economic pain, long-lasting damage on society and public health as a whole. So there won't be lockdowns, but we watch. There need to be lockdowns. Very careful, and we're putting out. We need to. We need to lock everything down. We need to not have embers or flames at all. What's happening with uh, Miami, and uh, it's going. The numbers are going down, but Florida is going down very significantly. So Florida is going down like a burning ship. Down. Not. Florida is not going down. Florida is a hot spot. Medicine, as we discussed the last time, as, and as I said. Uh, Numerous times during this day, it's an incredible thing that's happening. A central part of our effort to protect the elderly is to greatly expand access to telehealth so seniors can be treated from the safety of their homes. And that's what's happening. The number of Medicare beneficiaries using telehealth increased from roughly 14,000 a week to nearly 1.7 million. So from 14,000 to 1.7 million per week in total. 10 million Medicare beneficiaries of excess telehealth services since the pandemic began. It's Good. a tremendous thing that's happened with telehealth. 
As we shelter those at high risk, we are also pouring every resource at our no, disposal not. into the development no, of therapies not. and vaccines. Two vaccine candidates are currently in the final stage of clinical trials, with several more vaccine candidates entering phase three in the coming weeks. And you've read and seen what's happened today. Today's news was very exciting. Which was? Through Operation Warp Speed. We're also mass producing all of the most promising vaccine candidates, and we're determined to have a vaccine very quickly. We think we're going to have something very soon. We have and great how, companies. How, how long will that the take? Greatest companies in the world. But Sugar right now, coder? they don't like me so much because I'm forcing them to drop drug prices, prescription drug prices, very massive. Now, if you well, listen to my podcast, you will see that the amount of people that. Uh, He's affecting with the drug price reductions with at least the using favored nation, um, using the rebates, we're using the two medicines, the, the so EpiPen and insulin is like less than three tenths of one percent of the population and, uh, are very wealthy. Nobody even are being are, are being affected by wealthy. that executive and order. And we're doing the rebates, we're doing uh, purchase from other countries uh, like Canada, which buys drugs for much less money than the United States is allowed to under a, a very bad system. I don't call it archaic. I call it bad because it's. I don't call it archaic because I don't know what archaic under means. Prices. So I'm just going to call it bad. And, uh, under, under the system of matching that we have, if Germany has a pill for ten cents and ours is two dollars, we're allowed to say we want favored nations and we want the pill for the same. The same as the lowest country in the world. If they sell to one country lower than anybody else, that's the price we're going to get. Drug companies aren't too happy about that. Big Pharma. We've also dramatically accelerated the availability of plasma therapies. Plasma. Plasma. I was so fancy with this plasma. plasma. Therapies to treat the illness. Today, the NIH, we're very Does excited to announce that. Does even know what plasma is? are beginning the plasma. trial of two new antibody treatments, which will take place in 40 cities across the country. We're going to move, move very quickly. The results look very good already. Incredible results. More than... 230 clinical trials for potential treatments are underway, and we've secured 500,000 courses of treatment for remdesivir. Of remdesivir, we're really uh, doing a job with it, and it's helping a lot of what people. What happened That's to hydroxychloroquine? The fatalities and, and Dr. Emanuel numbers looking very good, Idiot. relatively speaking. That is. But that's for American hospitals through the month of September. So we have remdesivir at a very high level for hospitals through the month of September. That's big news. Big the United States also is far and away the most robust testing capacity in the world. Testing has been incredible, what we've been able to do. We've had the we best testing. No testing's been since better. Since March 12th, we've increased daily testing by 32,000 percent. That's still not enough. 32,000 That's still not enough. Percent. Somebody would say that must be a typo. It's not a typo. That's still not enough. 32,000 percent. We now have conducted over 61 million tests nationwide, averaging over 820,000 tests per day and nearly 5 million tests per week. And now that we're understanding the virus, we're understanding very much what we're doing with respect to who it affects, who it's. Uh, well, no, because your own Department of Education, or head of the Department of Education, Betsy DeVos, said that children are stoppers, uh, when in reality, children help spread it better than anyone else. Testing. I call it focus testing. Uh, by comparison, what you, call it. you don't know anything so about this sort of thing. Numbers that are incredible, but by comparison, uh, Mexico, as you know, the president was here. He's a great guy, but their their numbers are much different. They do about one million tests. France has done two point nine million. Per tests capita, per capita, you're not understanding per capita. The, if, the United if States is testing rates. more people. Look at rates per week. capita. I mean, yes, at some point we surpass people uh, per capita, but look at it the per capita and see how how much better we're doing per capita is, is going to show they're not doing well enough. An amazing achievement, the testing and the quality of the testing also. And the fact that a lot of those and other countries, especially in Europe, are having less deaths. Seven minutes you watch that video minutes. with him talking There's about how we don't know if it's true labs, from what came out from South from Over the last Korea. Years, HHS has opened surging testing sites in Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Phoenix, Miami, Jacksonville, Florida. McAllen, Is that Texas, we Bakersfield, were California. Surging. And this week we're opening new surge sites in Houston, Texas, Atlanta. Because we're not doing Today, a good job maintaining this virus. It's spreading. Tests have been conducted at these sites. 
Last week, the FDA also authorized the first two tests that display an estimated quantity of antibodies present in the individual's blood, which is a big deal, allowing us to learn more about the immune response. FEMA and HHS has worked with the private sector to deliver more than, we have new numbers, more than 200 million N95 masks, 855 million surgical masks, 36 million goggles and face shields, 364 million gowns and coveralls, and 21 Imagine billion Imagine if he was gloves, producing billion, those. Can you believe that? Billion gloves. If you were producing those from day one instead of that dragging your feet. Uh, different states, and uh, they're, when we get on the phone with them, they're very happy, that I can tell you. No, no complaints from any of them. They're very, very happy. Because they all realize they have to what kiss your ring in order to make sure that they can help the people response, in their they states. They're very happy with the job we've done. In our national stock, they're not going to complain to you because you're going to take away their goods that they need for their citizens because you're a vindictive a hole. To 15 million and quadrupled the number of ventilators to nearly 70,000. These numbers are growing every day, and we're now making thousands of ventilators, many thousands of ventilators a month. And we're getting them to other countries who are desperately in need of ventilators. They're very hard to produce, they're very complicated machines. Uh, so we're uh, we're fully stocked here, and we've made sure that every state is fully stocked. But we're getting them to a lot of Wonder countries that need help. If anybody fact we'll checks that to, to see if that's local correct, that every state is fully stocked. significant hospital capacity, protective equipment, supplies, and medicine. I'm more confident than ever that we will get a vaccine very soon, and we will defeat the virus. Very soon. I want to thank you all for being here. We'll take a few questions. A few questions, uh, I'm sure. I wanted to ask you about Kodak. You had a big announcement the other day about getting Kodak into the uh, pharmaceutical business, um, but the SEC is now investigating what happened. Can you say a word or two whether you think that there might have been some kind of a problem uh, in terms of how those arrangements were made? Is there any grounds for concern from your perspective? Well, yes. I don't know. I wasn't Not from his concern, deal. I'm from sure. The deal is good, but I'll let you know. We'll, we'll do a little study on that. We'll okay. find out. Okay. If this if there is any problem, we'll let you know about it very quickly. But uh, I wasn't involved in it. Uh, it's of course you weren't involved in it, because the buck stops nowhere to near you. In addition to you don't take any responsibility Kodak for anything. It's been a great name, but obviously pretty much in a different business. And so we'll see what that's all about. But we'll, we'll let you know very I mean, quickly. Basically, I don't know what you're talking about. I want to follow up before I ask the coronavirus question on Lebanon. You called this an attack. Uh, are you confident that this was an attack and not an accident? Well, it would seem like it based on the explosion. I've met with some of our great generals, and they just seem. I'm an expert in explosion, like so it has to be an attack. Uh, some kind of a uh, manufacturing uh, explosion type of event. This was a, it's a manufacturing it explosion be, type of event. No better than I would, but they. A met, a met meet, a, uh, M-E-T, -E, a meta. It was a bomb of some kind. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and on coronavirus, you've talked a lot about when you talk about the mortality rate. I don't think anybody's reported this as attack. Cases, which yeah, I understand that is significant when you look at um, how deadly the virus is or how good a country does at right. keeping people alive who get infected. But when you're talking about the scope of this virus, there you go. You look at the percentage of the population that's died, there's only three countries that have more deaths than the U.S. So how do you explain that, that why the percentage of the population who's died is so much higher in the U.S.? Well, I think actually the numbers are lower than others. I'll get back to you on that. But lower than two. You had the numbers in front of you in that other report, that Axios report, but you didn't want to hear about it because you wanted to do. Also, we're at the bottom of the list, which is a good thing being at the bottom of the list. But I can get back to you. We have about four or five different lists on that. Somebody list that we're not only going to talk about the list that make me look good. We're not going to talk about the list that made me look bad. Uh, you know, Coronavirus Research Center is on their website. It says the most affected countries, when you look at deaths per 100,000 people, the population, so how many people the population have died, you have the UK, Peru, Chile, and then the US. Um, you know, Canada has 8,000, 9,000 deaths. Obviously, they're smaller than us, but that's only 6% of the population. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's 6% of our total cases. So why are the deaths so much higher well, in the U.S.? Well, a lot of our numbers were based on the New York at a very tough time, as you know, New York, New Jersey. Of course, pass the buck to New York. When you take them out. Uh, when you take them out. How could you take them out? You can't take them out. You're the president of all 50 states, not 49. 
people are close together. It's crowded. It's, uh, it's not easy. But when you take that out, our numbers are among the lowest. And Why would you take it out? And I will get back to you, but we have among the lowest. Why would you take it out? Fantastic job running. Yeah. Yes, Mr. President. I would like to ask the question, but one thing on unemployment first. Are you considering taking executive action to extend or r rather reinstate the unemployment benefits that expired last week if Congress can't get a deal by the end of the week? Yes. And as a general point, what rate then would you want in there? A percentage or flat rate? We are looking at it. We're also looking at... Uh, He's looking at a lot of things. I'm allowed to do under the system, and uh, such as the payroll tax suspension. And so we'll Payroll tax suspension so does not the help they seem to be much more unemployment people on unemployment. If they don't have a job, they they don't can't, have don't have a job to go back to. They're uh, their businesses are closed because they can't be open because of the virus. I mean, really bad management. So uh, that seems to be where they they're looking for a trillion dollars to help out with cities that are run by Democrats. In some case, radical left Democrats. Ugh, there we go. Not done a good job. I appreciate today the Wall Street Journal said very good things that. We did a great job in Portland by having our people go in Homeland Security, Jack no. Wolf and the folks we went into. You're uh, Jack Booted thugs. And we've done a great the Marilyn Gestapo, if you will. That we, that we really won that situation. But we want the whole, we, we did say to the courthouse, the court, courthouse was going to be burned down or knocked down. It was in tremendous. Knocked down. Yes, they had, they had equipment with, with big, it. giant uh, metal balls to go knock the down the courthouse. The journal said, as far as the <sighs> various uh, things that I may or may not sign, uh, I, I may not have to sign. I mean, progress has been made, as you know, very well in the Hill. We'll see what happens. But I have the right, including the payroll tax suspension. Which uh, doesn't help people who do don't have a job. We want to take care of the eviction problem. People are being evicted very unfairly. It's not their fault. It's China's fault. It's not their China's fault. fault. People are being no, it's the green. It's the fault of the U.S. government so for not it, being able to handle this quick. dilemma, Even this from pandemic, properly, COVID, and then not uh, looking out for the citizens who are being affected. And there are thousands of people in the shelters, and this is not a time. You never want to be in a shelter, but this is not a time to be in a shelter with the COVID. He and said something it, correct. Yeah, you don't want to be in a shelter during so the COVID-19 during a pandemic. Look at that. We offered them short-term deals, and we offered them lots of alternatives. But so far, the only thing they really want to do is bail out states that have been poorly managed by Democrats. Yeah. And if I could on the election, sir, can I? President Trump, on the, uh, the sale of TikTok, you're basically arguing that the U.S. government is going to collect a cut from a, t of a transaction, including two companies, in which it doesn't hold a stake in. That's unprecedented. That's never happened in U.S. history before. And the administration has offered very little explanation about how that's going to work. Can you back your statement up and provide specifics about Did how Did you that say that's work? impressive? Did you actually use that term? I said it's unprecedented. Oh, <laughs> Not quite. I like, it. I like We should be unprecedented. Not quite. Close. Um, so TikTok. TikTok. TikTok is TikTok. very successful. It does tremendous business in the United States. People are riveted by it. Uh, I had many friends when they saw that announcement, they called and I think their kids love it. They don't because they don't get to see their kids anymore. But they are. It's it's an amazing thing, whatever it may be. And whatever it may be, I don't know anything about it, Microsoft, but I want to. And frankly, others, if they want to do it, uh, if they make a deal for. TikTok, whether it's the 30% in the United States or the whole company, I say it's okay, but if you do that, we're really making it possible because we're letting you operate here. So the United States Treasury would have to benefit also. Wow. Not just the sellers. And I said, inform. How? Very simple. I mean, we have we have all the cards because without us, you can't come into wow. the state. Wow. Wow. If you're a landlord and you have a tenant. The tenant's business needs a rent. It we want our cut. I go, I'm going to give you an offer you can't refuse. Either you shut down your business or you sell to another company. When you sell to that U.S. company, we want our cut, all right? Capiche? Actually, they agreed with me. I mean, I think they agreed with me very much. 
Mafia yeah, Don. May or may not happen. We've give, given them to September 15th. Mafia so. Don. Like that is and just. We'll see. If we can have it, and if Corruption. Have That's area, draining the swamp, folks. That is draining the swamp. That would be good in that Trying to group in that strong arm money out of a sale, of a private sale, above and beyond defense, whatever and tax revenues would be, generated, would be generated by this so American company owning this new product that would create new revenues. We've had other companies call us. Uh, Microsoft called me directly, and uh, I said we don't want this garbage. Uh, I don't know where they are. It sounds like Microsoft is along the way of doing something. Uh, I don't blame them. It'd be a great company. They're a great company, but we cannot take the security risks of any of those companies, including Huawei, which, as you know, has put a halt to. But we can't take the security risk. I think our attitude on China has changed greatly since the. China virus hit us. I think it changed. Great. Uh, it hit the world and it the China virus. It should be the U.S. virus because we have four percent of the world's population and twenty-five percent of the cases. When you, lose, when you lose so many thousands, darn racist. People, uh, you know, ultimately, it'll be millions of people around the world. Uh, it's a terrible thing that happened to the United States and Europe and the entire world. Really, a terrible thing. Yes, please. Uh, you let it spread. Two questions: one on the virus and one on policing. On the virus. You said recently that there can be too much testing. Can you explain what the <laughs> downside would be from testing too many Americans for the virus and why Thank you haven't you. provided a date by Thank which you. Uh, all Americans might have the same kind of testing that we have here at the White House? Well, we do more testing than anybody in the world. That's not the question. I don't mean just a little bit. If you look at India, they're at about 11 million and we're at 61 million. And uh, there comes a point when you just you, you want to focus your testing in a different way. And you we'll want to be announcing something. What we've done is incredible. We want to gather tests. information. Not We're not testing, gathering enough not information. Not the number of tests, but also, very importantly, the quality of the test and the The fact that they took two weeks to, to return a value, so the testing was not useful at all? 15-minute result. That's a very accurate result, and we do with Abbott. Abbott Laboratories has done a great job. Hey, Abbott! Many of these companies have done an incredible job. Sorry. So we're looking at that very strongly, and we're looking at uh, doing something that if we do, if we do it, look, Right now, what the testing is doing is helpful, but we're spending massive amounts. But it's too much. It's too much information. We can't have so much information. Information is bad, according to the Trump administration. But we are testing at a level that no country in the world, and I've spoken to the leaders of the world, and they'll ask me about it. No country in the world thought it would be, it's even believable that we're able to test so much. 61 million versus, you know, most countries don't even test. You know when they test? When somebody is feeling badly. If somebody is feeling badly, they're symptomatic. We were only testing when, when people were test. symptomatic as well. And we needed to do more to be able to see who has it, who's not symptomatic, who's asymptomatic, so we can learn what areas can resume more normalcy and what other areas need a stricter lockdown. So and not be prepared. I haven't spoken to the post office about it. If you started early voting early and you, you were enabled them to collect them early on and start counting early on, you'd be able to have a system in place that could handle more votes coming in. And if you told the post office you prioritize absentee voting for the two weeks before the election, then guess what? You'd be able to handle the postal surge. You'd be able to handle the... It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's really just about not letting people vote. And, uh, he doesn't want people to vote. Even in the case of mail-in ballots, uh, the because he knows that the more people who cast valid ballots, time, the less likely he is going to win. Maloney, valid ballot, more valid ballots means he loses. Period. Over. That election is no good. You have to take a look in New York. They have thousands of ballots. They don't know what happened to them. Is there fraud? Is there? It's a disaster. And that's only for a relatively small number of uh, ballots, but I think they have to do the election in New York over. The Times wrote a big story about it yesterday, front page story. It's a disaster. It's a mess. And they have to do that. I think they have to do that election over. Nobody can know what the election result is. So in the case of Florida, they've done a great job. Uh, they've had tremendous success with it. But they've been doing this over many years, and they've made it really terrific. So for Florida, you can mail in your ballots. You don't have to go. In maybe a couple of other states, they've worked out a system. But this took years to do. This doesn't take weeks or months. In the case of Nevada, they're going to be voting in a matter of weeks. And 
You can't do that. I can't yes, imagine you the can. post office. We're Americans, not Americans. <laughs> if we put our mind to something, we shouldn't be able to do it. Be a leader. Be a leader. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Of course. What about in other states? Did you encourage voters in other states? And there you have it, folks. Our wonderful president. Ugh. Refusing to take responsibility for anything. Anything. You know, he, he wants to take responsibility for the good stuff, but then all the bad stuff is not his fault. It's other people's fault. You know, it's China's fault that the virus started in China, but has spread here like wildfire. You know, he doesn't want to talk about the stuff that, you know, we're, when it comes to overall deaths, that we are one of the worst as a populace. Look, that's the thing. Death per cases. As we test more, and if you get more negative cases, then your death, then you're going to have a good negative test rate. But if, if you have tests per actual cases of the virus, you know, if you get more asymptomatic people that are testing positive, yes, your death rate's going to drop. But if the total amount of cases goes up, it doesn't matter if the death rate's lower, because if your infection rate's higher, that offsets the death rate being lower, because the more people overall in your population are going to die. It's ridiculous. And then this thing about the whole, I'm helping to say, to listen to my podcast, Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Central on blogtalkradio.com slash liberal Dan, you will, you can go back and check one of my previous podcasts where I discussed his executive orders and the, and the first one specifically when he talked about the the reduction of prices in these specific health centers where I guess they get a, they get to buy it at a discount and he wants to make sure that the people who go there get this discount I calculated that no more than three tenths of one percent of the US population benefits from that executive order no more that's it He's only helping three-tenths of one percent. It's not the wonderful, great thing that he's trying to make everything out to be. Because he has to sugarcoat everything. Anyway, that's it for this reaction, live reaction to his uh, news conference. And I, I would like to come back with more soon. As you can see from the last one, I've grown a, a corona beard. I'm growing my hair out a bit. I'm going to be donating uh, that hair to charity once it grows long enough to be able to be cut. So there you go, and it is what it is. If you want to uh, follow me, you can please subscribe to the channel, uh, like this video, share this video, and follow me at Liberal Dan Radio on Twitter, like Liberal Dan on Facebook, and facebook.com slash Liberal Dan, and there's also my Anchor podcast, anchor.fm slash Liberal Dan, and you can also support the Patreon, Liberal Dan Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Liberal Dan as well. So, again, we'll be doing more of these soon. Uh, subscribe, share, thank you. Have a good day. Stay, stay, stay healthy, mask up, and stay away from people.